Hello everybody, hola, todo bem, como estas? So if you're new to the channel, my name is Elliot and I created this channel because I want to learn more about Latin America. So predominantly I've been reacting to Latin American music videos suggested by you, but I'm also um, reading a lot of Latin American books for the first time and on this channel I plan to do reviews. So today is gonna to be another book review it's El Tunnel, so The Tunnel by Ernesto Sabato. So Ernesto Sabato was an Argentinian novelist. He was actually originally a physicist and he was also a painter. Now, I know Argentina has a rich literary tradition. Also has, of course, Jorge Luis Borges. And I have read um, Borges's Labyrinths, but um, I plan to reread that so I can give a up-to-date review of it. So this book is about a deranged painter who murders the woman he's having an affair with out of obsession. So this book inspired Albert Camus in writing The Stranger. Now I have read The Stranger a few years ago and it is an existentialist, absurdist, nihilistic, philosophical book and... I know a lot of young people especially look up to nihilism and they think it's sort of a trendy philosophy to follow, um, but it's not, it's, it's really not. And when I was younger, I kind of looked into nihilism and thought it was like a liberating philosophy to sort of nothing matters, so you're free to do whatever you want. However, nihilism, the natural extension of nihilism, if your life doesn't matter, is that no one life matters and it can potentially lead to, you know, treating people terribly because you think nothing matters. However, from the tunnel, I didn't get nihilistic vibes from it. I didn't read the book and perceive it as a philosophical treatise. It came across to me very psychological and in particular very disturbingly psychological from literally from the first chapter and the second chapter is very disturbing and very creepy because of the protagonist and how the protagonist fought to me personally it come across as very cautionary tale so why the book is so disturbing and so cautionary is because how the protagonist thinks and how he rationalizes things is how I could think and is also how you could think is how anyone could think if we don't govern our minds and control our thoughts like the protagonist is a misanthrope and I know some people I read some reviews and they said he's like a deranged misogynist and I think that's such a shallow reading of the book to perceive him and just cast him as a misogynist. He's not just a misogynist, he's a misanthrope. He hates humanity, he hates people, and he hates himself predominantly. Um, you know, he can't control his thoughts. He's, you know, let himself fall into self-pity, and he's got feelings of grandiosity and narcissism. And I think it all stems to him having, like, the wrong psychological outlook on life. He's mentally ill. And anyone could fall into those thought traps if you don't control your mind, if you give in to self-pity. I think it's a, a natural tendency that we can all fall into if, um, you know, we have a little thought and it snowballs into something big. And that's if we don't keep our thoughts unchecked. And what I mean by... I could potentially become like the protagonist and so could you is that inside all of us is the potential to commit atrocities you know if you was born in 1930s Germany you would have probably been a Nazi ordinary people who don't use rationality and logic and you know keep their mind under control can commit these atrocious crimes and it happens all of the time in particular, people form ideological positions and they let it go to the natural extreme. You know, if you take fundamentalist religion and theology, which people do, and take it to the fundamental extremes, it results in 
terrible consequences and we see this common in people taking political positions if you take right-wing politics to the ideological extremes and you don't let your mind check and think with logic you know you end up in fascism and if you take ideological positions on the left to the far extremes of marxism and communism you know you end up with hundreds of millions of people dead like that's happened in the past you know you shouldn't be living in your head all of the time you shouldn't let small thoughts manifest into big thoughts jealousy shouldn't lead to obsession and possession and then eventually murder and we all have a responsibility to govern our thoughts and i think we all have a moral obligation to control our thoughts and that's what's so disturbing about the book is that Ernesto Sabato has written it, I don't know how he's managed to convey it so truthfully that you are in the mind of someone who has this disturbed, disturbing and deranged, deranged thought process. And what's just so disturbing for me is that it just feels so real and so accurate that that's how some people actually generally think. Um, so if you ever do have a nihilistic outlook and you ever have those feelings of obsession and intense jealousy you know i think you have to really control your mind really check your mind and not let that happen because you know that can happen there is a human tendency to to fall down those traps so that's why i think the book is so cautionary and is so disturbing as it's such an accurate psychological perspective of an individual who is has these you know, thoughts, thoughts of um, low self-esteem, perhaps, that leads into the need for constant validation, constantly knowing where his uh, lover is all the time, you know, has these doubts that she's cheating and having an affair, and then that leads to obsession and possession, and it's so creepy and it's so uncomfortable, but this is actually how people can think. This is how thought processes can work if you let your mind fall to extremes, if you don't check it with rationalism and logic and, you know, control yourself. So in summary, the book is very strange. It's very creepy. It's very disturbing. Um, and it seems very psychological real to me that how that's how people can think that's how people can justify that's how people can potentially commit atrocities and let their minds fall to extremes Ernesto Sabato has written it so purely and so beautifully that you really get into the mind of this murderer and um that's very disturbing but anyway if you've read this book the, the tunnel before what are your thoughts on it let me know. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like, please subscribe, please give me recommendations for other books to read. This was certainly very interesting, not particularly enjoyable because of how disturbing it is. And I think I'm going to have to read something much lighter and much nicer next time. But a very strange, very cautionary tale and um, yeah, a great piece of literature. Thank you for watching. Gracias, obrigado, adiós, chao.